Come a little closer and listen carefully. You don't suppose I'm dying because I want to, do you? My family, the men all die suddenly. Always have, always will. Doctors can't explain it. <laughs> Lots of things doctors can't explain. Now, when it comes to dying, it's like everything else. If you want a thing done right, do it yourself, I always say. You can't trust anyone with the details, especially these days with the kind of help you get. Howard Williams speaking. Use your own judgment for once and don't call me back. I'm busy dying. Yes, I said dying. Goodbye. Now you listen and listen carefully. Theater 5 presents a very private phone call. Evans, Dr. Barlow has been in my husband's room more than an hour. Is something wrong? Now, Mrs. Williams, you mustn't worry. But I am worried. It isn't like Howard to be sick. Well, we all have to be sick sometimes. And Dr. Barlow is very capable. But it's all been so sudden. The way Howard fainted last night. And today he couldn't get out of bed. And now Dr. Barlow won't even let me in the room. Oh, Nurse Evans, I just know something terrible is wrong with Howard. Now, really, worrying won't help, Mrs. Williams. Do let me fix you some coffee. No. And it's no use talking in that soothing way. Howard is going to die. And I'll be left all alone. No, please, you mustn't... And I can't stand being alone. When my father died, I was 27, and I'd kept house for him since I was 16. And then all of a sudden, he was gone. And I was alone. Well, we all have to be alone sometimes. But I hate it. I'm not practical. I can't even balance my own checkbook. All I know is how to keep a nice house and entertain. And that's been enough for Howard. He was my father's business partner, you know. After father died, he looked after things for me. And then, well, we just got married. Of course, he's much older, but I like him. I like my husband very much, Nurse Evans. Even if he won't take me on any trips as he promised he would. Won't take you on any trips? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Around the world. Howard is in shipping, and he owns steamships and plantations and mines in Africa and the South Seas and just everywhere. Places I've longed to go see ever since I read about them when I was a girl. Well, I should think he'd be glad to take you along on his trips, Mrs. Williams. But that's just it. He never took any trips. He stayed right here and did all his business by telephone. Do you know how many telephones we have? Thirteen. Before we were married, he promised we'd go around the world on our honeymoon. But then some business came up and we never went. That's the only thing I have against him in ten years of marriage. I admire and respect him and... And I don't want him to die. I don't want to be left alone again. Now, please, you mustn't let yourself get him. Oh, here's Dr. Barlow. Doctor! Doctor, how's Howard? Mrs. Williams, your husband wants to speak to you. You must be very brave. You mean he's going well, to... I'm sorry to say it's only a matter of time, perhaps of minutes. No, no! He wants some last words with you. Now be strong and don't upset him. I'll try. Good. Go in now. He's waiting for you. All right. Howard... Ah, there you are. Took you long enough. I suppose that quack Barlow told you. Oh, Hart, please don't die. Don't go away. Don't leave me all alone. Laura, stop that confounded <laughs> blubbering. Yes, Howard. I hate crying women, so control yourself. Yes, Howard. Yeah, that's better. Now listen to me. You see those three phones on my bedside table? Yes, the black one for your European calls, the white ones for your calls to South America, 
And the red one. The one that never rings. Oh, you've noticed that the red line never rings. That's because it's intended to ring only once. Only once? I said only once. Don't make me repeat myself. Sorry. When that red line rings, you must be here to answer it. When the time comes, you must not fail me. Promise, Laura? I do, Howard, I do. I won't fail you. Hmm. Well, I'll give you credit for that. You're reliable. I've tried to be a good wife. Have you been satisfied with me? Yes, of course. You run the house very nicely. Well, then don't die. Don't go away and leave me all alone. Stop sniffling. I told you I detest crying women. I'll try. You don't suppose I'm dying because I want to, do you? In my family, the men all die suddenly. Always have, always will. Doctors can't explain it. <laughs> Lots of things doctors can't explain. But now listen, Laura. And listen carefully. It's the phone. And which phone is it? White one. South America. Well, let's see who it is. Not at a time like it's this. It's business. Answer it. Yes, dear. Hello? Well, well, just a moment, please. It's Rio de Janeiro. Shall I send your freighter Woodbine on to Tahiti and then Bali Bali or direct to Australia? Let me have it. Here. Hello. Howard Williams speaking. Use your own judgment and don't call me back. I'm busy dying. Yes, I said dying. <laughs> it ought to give him something to think about. Howard? Well? Are they really so romantic? Is who so romantic? You know, Rio de Janeiro, Tahiti, Bali Bali. <laughs> They're all Americanized with neon lights and soda pop machines. Well, just the same, I'd like to see them. I'd like so much to see them. Now we'll never go. You're dying. We'll never go anywhere. We're... Howard? Howard! Doctor! Doctor! What is it, Mrs. Williams? Oh, nurse, my kit! Yes, Doctor. Hurry! Hmm. No perceptible pulse. Respiration nil. Now to check the heart. Doctor! Is he... One moment. Hmm. No heartbeat. Yes, I'm afraid so, Mrs. Williams. Your husband is dead. No. No. Well, you must be strong. Here's uh, a letter he instructed me to give you after his death. Letter? It explains about the red telephone. You know how your husband opposed what he considered fuss and feathers. He expressly demanded no ceremonies of any sort and left positive orders he was not to be embalmed. That means he must be buried within 24 hours. That's the law in this state. Oh, no, that, that's so soon. Tomorrow afternoon, he will be laid to rest in the family vault in Rolling Hills Cemetery. Until the mortician comes, I will remain in this room with the body. That is also your husband's order. I see. Also, his wishes are that after the funeral, you will remain either in this room or the adjoining sitting room for three full days, not even leaving for meals. I don't understand. Well, it's, it's all explained in his letter. Now, Nurse Evans, uh, please take care of Mrs. Williams. Of course, Doctor. Come with me, Mrs. Williams. You must rest now. He's gone. Howard's gone. Now I'm all alone. We are back again, Mrs. Williams. You were very brave. I couldn't cry because it didn't seem real. 
Those men put Howard in a box, put the box on the stone shelf in the mausoleum, and they put a slab in front of the box. We all went away and left him there. Now, it was a very nice funeral, dignified and simple. You understand that I'll be here to look after you for the next three days. I'll be in the room down the hall any time you need me. Yes, thank you. And no one will bother you. The telephones won't ring because the secretary is taking all calls downstairs. In the red phone? The red phone? He said I must, I must be here to answer it, that I mustn't fail him. Well, I don't know anything about a red telephone, I'm afraid. A letter. The doctor gave me a letter from Howard about it. If I've lost it, Howard will be furious. He'll shout and swear and... But he's dead, isn't he? Yes, Mrs. Williams. Oh, uh, is this the letter here on the bedside table? Oh, y yes, I, I must have put it there yesterday. Well, I'll leave you to read it. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Reedy. It's all right, nurse. I just wanted to speak to Mrs. Williams. Yes, of course. It's Mr. Reedy, your husband's lawyer, Mrs. Williams. Now, be sure to ring if you need me. My dear, you have been very brave. It just doesn't seem real. I understand. And I've been thinking. Why don't you plan a sea voyage, a trip around the world? New sights, new faces to help you forget. No, I don't want to do that. You hear? I won't do it. But I always understood... You that... don't understand. Those cruises are full of women traveling all alone trying to find a man. And never, never finding one. Well, I won't be one of those awful women traveling every place all alone. But my dear... Now go away and leave me alone. Well, perhaps I haven't explained my idea correctly. I'm sure our Mr. Roberts can do it better. I'll, I'll send up Mr. No, Roberts. I just want to be left alone. Oh, Howard, why did you have to die? Why? The letter. I haven't read the letter. You'll be angry at me. I I'll read it right away, Howard. Right away. Dear Laura, you must stay in this room or the adjoining sitting room, for three full days. That's because if the red telephone rings, you must be there to answer it. Laura, if that red line rings, it will be me calling you. You calling me? But, Howard, I don't understand. Oh, yes, of course, the letter. For, for generations, generations, Laura, the, the man in my, my family, family have died suddenly. Those quacks, the doctors, can't explain it. It's a family inheritance, that's all. But uh, are you paying attention, Laura? Sometimes we return to life after being, to all appearances, dead. My goodness. I say sometimes return to life. Five of my ancestors have done so. Five we know about. One was saved. The others were found with their fingernails ripped off, trying to claw their way out of their coffins. Their bodies were twisted and contorted. Oh, how awful. This must not happen to me. You must not let it happen. That red telephone, it connects to the family mausoleum. As I am laid to rest, the mortician will plug in a wire connecting the red phone to a microphone in the lining of my coffin. If I so much as whisper, the red telephone will ring like a fire alarm, and you'll answer it. Do you understand, Laura? Yes. Yes, I do understand. So, if you hear the phone ring, I will be calling. Answer at once. Then contact Dr. Barlow and the mortician. All three of you will rush to the family vault to rescue me. So, Laura, stay close to the red phone. It may ring. I may return to you for the last time. Are you sure you understand? Yes, I do, I do. Oh, please come back, Howard, please. Maybe you're there now, trying to speak. Howard, can you hear me? Howard, are you there? Howard, please speak to me. Oh, he doesn't answer. It's too soon. I'll wait. I'll wait. Hello? Mrs. Williams? May I come in? Who is it? 
Well, Mrs. Williams, I hope you'll forgive me for barging in like this, but Mr. Reedy feels it's important. I'm Lawrence Roberts. Lawrence Roberts? Yes. You see, I've handled most of Mr. Williams' legal businesses last year. I'm one of the junior partners. You're one of the junior partners of the law firm? That's right. <laughs> they gave me a partnership as a present for my 40th birthday. I'm the firm's foreign expert. Uh, could we talk, Mrs. Williams, in the next room, perhaps? Well, I suppose we could. Good, good. I have some papers to show you. Well, I, I don't really feel like talking about business now, Mr. Roberts. Oh, of course not. I do understand. However, on the other hand, I, it'll help take your mind off what's happened. Well, if you think so. I do, definitely. Yeah, shall we sit here? Right. Now, here's the situation. You've just inherited a rather large business enterprise, Mrs. Williams. All over the world there are mines, plantations, shipyards that belong to you. There are? There certainly are. And uh, Mr. Reedy thought that this would be a perfect time for you to take a long No, trip. I told him I won't. But, Mrs. Williams... I'm not going to be a middle-aged woman all alone with a lot of other middle-aged women on one of those trips. I just won't do it. If I have to be alone, I'll... I'll stay all alone right here. But you won't be alone. The firm wants you to inspect your various holdings around the world. Naturally, we don't expect you to visit all those places by yourself. I'll be your guide. You'll go with me? All around the world. And you couldn't find a better guide. Why, I spend half my time traveling, and besides... Well, I'm the only one the firm can spare. You see, I'm the only bachelor. You're not married? Nope. Never took the plunge. Too busy traveling, I suppose. Now, this is my plan. First, we go to Rio de Janeiro. We'll get there just at carnival time. Carnival time in mm. Rio. Masks and costumes, dancing, and music. And a lot more. Oh. You haven't lived until you've been through carnival time in Rio. Well, from Rio, we'll make a trip by boat up the Amazon. Wonderful. And then on to the Orient. We'll stop off in Tahiti. Tahiti. Of course. And then fly on to Bali Bali. Uh, we'll stay long enough to see the exotic native dances. And then? Then, oh, there are dozens more places for us to see. The ruined cities of old Cambodia, uh, picturesque Hong Kong, a trip up Mount Fujiyama. <laughs> I'll make sure you see everything, Mrs. Williams. Oh, you make it sound so exciting. Rio, Tahiti, Bali Bali, Cambodia, Hong Kong, Mount Fujiyama. Mm -hmm. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Williams, but, uh... Yes? Well, seems to be a phone ringing in the other room. Oh. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> uh, most unusual sort of ring. Can't be an ordinary phone. <laughs> Sounds more like a small fire alarm. Yes, it's very loud. Yeah. Want me to answer it for you? Oh, no, it's probably just the wrong number. Let's just go downstairs where it won't bother us, and you can finish telling me all about our lovely trip. Fine, fine. Well, first we have to get you a passport, and then your shots. Oh, well, you'll have to go with me, but I'll be brave. And I suppose you'll have to get some clothes. Yes. What colors do you like, Mr. Roberts? Call me Larry, won't you, Mrs. Williams? A Very Private Phone Call, written by Robert Arthur and directed by Harry Nelson. In the cast, Joyce Gordon, Ben Yaffe, Gertrude Warner, Hal Burdick, and Ralph Camargo. Audio engineer, Marty Folia. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Thank you.
Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. Thank you.